I will start uh, with Ms. Uh, Kauna. You are in the Pile of Africa, welcome. <laughs> we want to say that. But I don't think there is a, a very stiff difference between Uganda's real estate sector and Namibia's real estate sector. If you could start off with an overview, what does it look like? Uh, what is the perception? Because mindset is one key thing with regard to every opportunity, whether we're talking about business, whether we're talking about generally life. So what does the real estate sector look like in Namibia? Thank you for having me. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here. It's not my first time in Uganda, and I love it. And I'm happy to have the opportunity to be here. Thanks, Brian, and the team for, for inviting me. Um, you're right. I mean, the uh, commonalities in terms of the continent and where we are as Africans, uh, there's a lot of common themes that we can draw when we look at our various economies. Uh, the differences that are there obviously strengthens, I believe, our composition as Africans as we not just look at, obviously, cross-continental investments, but most probably looking at port a portfolio that's balanced across the African states. Now, in Namibia, the one difference that's probably there is that we very strong titled country. Um, everything is fenced and everything is in the deeds office. So for a private investor that wants to come in or an investor, an individual that wants to look at investment in the property market, it's probably an easier market to participate in terms of how to acquire land. It's, it's a very straightforward co conversation mm. between the owner of land and the uh, buyer of, of land. And obviously the financial market, and I'm happy to see that uh, there is, uh, I think, uh, other uh, partners in the financial sector that can talk to the financing. So the real estate financing market in Namibia is fairly well developed, so it's easier for aspiring investors in the uh, home industry to actually acquire property and get it funded, be it now as an individual unit or in the development space. It is a vast country with only three, less than three million people, so when it comes to the opportunity to do business and grow the portfolio of business and its political stability, of course, Namibia provides quite some interesting case. But I'm a Pan-African, and I believe in the opportunity of us Africans to take responsibility to develop the continent and having balanced portfolio that touches in different countries. So if you look at the opportunities in Uganda, for example, what mm. are the lessons that we can bring from Namibia and apply here, and what are the lessons that we can take from Uganda and apply? Because collectively, I believe Africans on the continent and in the diaspora should take that responsibility of pioneering and invest, inviting our co-investors that have a passion for Africa that are not necessarily African, but believe in doing the right thing. And it's to create more socially equitable communities across the continent and the world. All right, thank you very much. And, and I love that you talk about Pan-Africanism because that remains key. Um, if I could stay with you for just a minute, one of the challenges is ownership because if I want to sell a property, I should be able to satisfy the buyer that I actually own that. Now, looking at the context of Uganda, I think we only have about 20% of the land titled. And, and when we talk about titling, that is clear that, yes, here's the title of the land, you can be able to change it, or we can be able to deal with this. What's the context of Namibia, and how does ownership of property, because if, if we're talking about building whatever it is in the real estate world, you need the land, because that is the starting point. But the ownership is very key and remains very key. And in fact, that's my reference to what can we learn from each other. I believe the effectiveness and the functionalities within the deeds office in Namibia is a good case for Namibia as a learning case on the continent. Mm. Um, there is no possibilities that the boundary is confused by five meters in Namibia. Um, the transactions in terms of property transfers are very efficient. Mm. The system in terms of the land boards, be it now in communal or commercial areas, but also in terms of the from the moment that deed is signed. And I think the mechanisms that are in place in terms of the safety of your money, that you can actually deposit your funds in a lawyer's trust account for it to be transferred. There's no limitation in terms of ownership. You don't have to be a citizen to own land. 
So the process is very efficient, and I believe that that's really where we as Africans can learn from each other, because if it can be done in Namibia, it can be done here. Sure. And, and, and I think there's a lot of uh, political will we're observing from our leaders to allow private sector to drive economic growth as opposed to government uh, wanting to own, control uh, assets. And property is an enabler for any investor. It's, it's a security measure, be it now at individual level or corporate buying property. You want to know that you can you, you own that property, you have proof of the ownership, and then you can securitize it. So I'm hoping that, obviously, I think the National Housing Enterprise in, the, in Uganda and the National Housing Enterprise in Namibia are sharing the same name and there are opportunities for cross-pollination.